Hello guys, welcome. Today, I'm going to show you how to animate a photo into a video with a technique called Camera Projection Mapping in Blender. To be able to make this, you'll need FSpy program and FSpy to Blender add-on. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, here I have opened the FSpy program. We can use it to match the perspective of an image. Basically, you can use two kind of image the one-point perspective image, and two-point perspective image. Here I'll show you the difference. So this is the one-point perspective image. All the parallel lines are converging into one single vanishing point. And this is the two-point perspective image. The parallel line will converge into two different vanishing points. In this scene, I'm using a one-point perspective image. So I'm going to set it into one vanishing point. And set the first axis into X and the second into Y. As for this camera data, I'm going to leave it into default. And for the sensor, I'm going to leave it into default as well. As for the focal length, I'm going to set it into this value because this is the value of the focal length of my camera. If you don't know about the focal length of your camera, you can leave it into default as well, and you can change it later on to see what fits in your image. So first, I'm going to align this red line into the parallel line in my image, like so, and this line as well. As for the green line, it represents the horizontal axis. So I'm going to align it into the horizontal line on the floor. Like so. Here, as you can see, the Z axis is pointing downward, which is incorrect. So I'm going to fix it by change the second axis into minus y and here as you can see the axis is correct you can check the perspective of your image by clicking this 3d guide i'm using the xy grid floor to see if it aligns properly you can use box as well And after that, I'm going to set the reference distance. I'm going to use the z-axis to measure it based on the height of the image. I'm going to put it here and roughly align it to this column and set it to 2.5 meter after all it's done you can save the file into fspy and later on you can import it in blender now we're in blender make sure you already installed the add-on fspy to blender add-on via the zip file now you can import the fspy file like so. So we already got the scene setup and the camera from the image. And now I can start the modeling process. I'm going to set it into wireframe so I can see the 3D model. I'm going to split the view and change this into the normal 3D view so I can see if I'm making changes like so
I'm going to speed up this process so you can see the whole modeling part. Here basically I'm selecting the vertex in edit mode and move it to match the shape of the corridor. Also I'm using E for extrude to add some segment in the corridor. Okay, so now the modeling of the base shape is finished and I'm going to give it a material. Let's change this into shader editor and change this into emission shader. With the texture from the FSPY. Like this. The reason I'm using the emission because the image is already contain the lighting information, so we can use that. And as you can see, the texture is kind of messed up. So we're going to add UV project modifier. So this modifier basically able to project a texture from a selected object like a camera so we're going to select the fspy camera now as you can see the texture is projected from this camera but it's kind of distorted so what we're going to do we're going to add subdivision surface and set it to symbol and crank up the value here like so and if you see there's still a little bit of distortion we need to add a loop cut so the 3d model is basically cut into equal part and shape more like a square so one long segment is divided into several equal square parts and I'm going to drag this into the upper part and as you can see this is already looking good maybe crank up the level one I see now the distortion is gone and the texture is already there for the next part I'm going to add some detail on the signage and on this part on the side You can match the position of the separate object if you can see where does it intersect with the floor or the ceiling.
okay now the detailing part is done you can go as detailed as you want here I am adding the signage and this pole in the left side and then you can add subdivision surface set to simple and UV project set to the FSPY camera and then you can add the same material like in the previous one I'm going to do it as well to this pole on the side Now all the material is done. Next I'm going to animate this scene. I'm going to use this camera from Blender base file. The reason I'm using this is because if you use the camera from the FSPY scene, the whole texture is gonna mess up. So I'm going to use this camera and make it the active camera by pressing this icon. Next, we're going to choose the view by pressing Ctrl Alt 0. There you go. And then adjust it by pressing N, go to view and camera to view so you can adjust it from the viewport. And I'm going to move the camera till I get the best angle and bring up the timeline make sure you're on the first keyframe and press I and click location and rotation and I'm going to scrub through until frame 120 and I'm going to move the camera forward by pressing G and Y like so and press I again and location rotation and I'm going to set the end frame to 120 as well then we can play the animation like so In this scene, because I want the camera to have linear movement, I'm going to select both keyframe and press T and choose linear. So it got linear move. And I'm actually going to fix the first position keyframe like so click I again location rotation and so add a bit of realism I'm going to add shaky camera a little bit shaky camera with the add-on camera shakeify make sure you also install the add-on from edit preference 
this is a great add-on to add a little bit of shaky handheld look to your camera animation I'm going to select both keyframe and click plus and I'm going to choose the close-up and then try to preview it maybe increase the scale and decrease the speed a little bit okay so basically the camera animation is done and as you can see in this scene there is some stretching issue on the wall and on the ceiling it happens because we already project the texture to these objects so we need to clean up the background so and we're going to do it in Photoshop so I'm going to jump to Photoshop to clean up this background okay so now I'm in Photoshop I'm going to unlock this layer and duplicate it by pressing ctrl J so I have my backup file and then in this layer I'm going to select the object that I want to separate like this signage I'm using polygonal lasso tool to select this object After that, you can right click and layer via copy. So I can have this layer individually. I can have this object individually. And I'm going to do it also to this pole on the side. And finally close the loop and right click and layer via copy now I have this object also cut out from the background next I'm going to select the duplicate layer and by holding control I'm selecting the pole object so I can get the selection of this object and I can go to select modify expand so I can expand the selection maybe around 20 pixel okay and then you can go right click click fill and I'm going to fill it with content aware click OK and then you can deselect by pressing ctrl D and I can hide this layer and as you can see the background layer is already filled with content aware I'm going to do the same thing with the signage And I'm going to hide both of this layer. As you can see, we got clean background. And if you want to clean up, clean up more, you can use tools like Clone Stem tool to sample the texture around this object but for me this is enough and also I'm going to select this object 
because I didn't model it in the blender file so I want to remove it from the background so now I'm going to export this clean background by pressing file export export as and I'm going to use JPEG format and you can click export all I've already done it before so that's just an example and after that you can click the visibility for this whole layer and then export it individually by clicking the same menu export as now I'm going to use PNG and make sure you click the transparency menu and then you can click export as well I'm going to do it to, to this signage layer next we're going back to blender to update the texture now we're back in blender I'm going to update the texture first select the corridor 3d model and going to change this to shader editor and I'm going to change the texture into the clean background version as for the signage you can go to material and click this icon to make the duplicate of the corridor material and then change the texture into the signage file that we already export previously going to hide this for a while now we get the clean animation as for the render setting I'm going to use EV with 100 sample And then I'm going to change this to maybe half, half of the original resolution because I think 3000 pixel it I think is too big like so make sure you're on the 24 FPS and I'm going to use PNG so I'm going to render it out as PNG sequence and then you can select the output folder of the render I think that's all for the render setting finally you can hit render animation and render it out as PNG sequence next we're going to After Effects to import the file and add some sound effects Finally, we're in After Effects and you can go import your file by clicking File, Import, File and choose your folder and select the first PNG file and make sure to select this PNG sequence menu and click Import and then you can import your file into the composition. Here I'm just adding the sound effect of the MRT train station.
And that's basically all for the camera projection mapping tutorial in Blender. Please let me know if you have any input and feedback in the comment below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like button if you find this video useful. See you guys in another video.